Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of WoW Battle for Azeroth or World of Warcraft Retail. Whichever you want to refer to it as is totally fine. Either way, we're back here in Goldshire today, obviously, because we have the <laughs> traditional pointless duels going on outside. Uh, but we have a crap ton of quests that we're going to have to pick up here. Need help? So let's get to it. The Fargo Deep Mine. Oh, we've got character names in our play in our area here. That's a good time to maybe turn character names off, but uh, we'll see. All the other names are already off. The mine in Northshire isn't the only one with problems. I have reports that the Fargo Deep Mine in Elvian has also become a haven for kobolds. Explore the mine and confirm these reports, and then return to me. The mine is almost due south of Goldshire between the stone... Yep, we know that. Again, this guy's quests seem like they're basically the same as they were in Classic. Some things have changed, but uh, not everything has changed. How are you? Uh, fishy Peril and Gold Dust Exchange, these are probably going to be very similar. There's a new threat in Elvian Forest. Murlocs are swimming up the streams of Eastern Elvian, scaring away fish and attacking gentle folk. I warned Marshal Dugan, but he's more worried about the gnolls and the bandits. He's not convinced that Murlocs are a danger. Please, speak to Dugan and persuade him to send more troops to the east. Murlocs are definitely more of a pain in the ass than gnolls are. I don't know what the Marshal is thinking, but... And then Gold Dust Exchange. The kobolds in these parts sometimes carry gold dust on them. I could really use the stuff. Bring me a load of it and I'll give you the best price in town. The best price in town. You can find kobolds in the Fargo Deep Mine to the south. And around Jasperload Mine to the northeast. See you around. Alright, so very similar to some quests that we did in Classic. Some of them are exactly the same, despite the well, Cataclysm good. having happened. And then further concerns. If you are concerned that the rumors of Murlocs are true, then do this. Travel to the Eastern Elwian Bridge and speak with guard Thomas. He has been stationed at the bridge for the past week. And we'll know the state. He has not only been stationed at the bridge for the past week, guys. Uh, at this point in Cataclysm, he's been stationed at the bridge for six years. So, <laughs> good to see he's diligent to his bridge duty. He must like it out there. It is rather peaceful. What can I do for you? Elmore's task, uh, that's going to be a quest to a Dwarven Weaponsmith, which is then going to give us a breadcrumb to take us to a different zone, Loch Modan perhaps. And then a swift message, let's see, although we don't get much aid from Stormwind directly, I do have a contact in the city who helps supply us with armor, his name is Ostrich. Alright, so these fetch quests are, are the same as they were in Classic. Uh, this is what is going to prompt us to fly, Good day to you. but we're just going to get the experience. See you later. We'll take the follow-up, but we're not going to fly to Stormwind right now. Uh, this is the command board. Once we get to level 10, this will let us choose different zones to go into. It'll give us the breadcrumb for any zone that we can level in at our level once we pass level 10. Need and then Cobalt Candles. We we know about Safe Cobalt travel. Candles. We're going to go get candles from the Cobalts, guys, because this this guy here, William Pestle, he needs them. That's really all you need to know about that quest. And we've done all these quests in full detail and read them all in the Paladin playthrough of Classic, and since many of them haven't changed, I, I don't know. It's almost redundant. I thought more would have changed, uh, but apparently not. Let's go ahead, and the first thing we're going to do is head south. Oh yeah, I, I keep forgetting that in Classic everything is simply going to be marked for us uh, on the map, so... My apologies if I, if I keep opening my map and checking it for no good reason. Uh, it's because I'm just used to having to actually navigate. I'll try to remember that we don't have to look at the map all the time, that we only have to look at the arrows uh, that are leading us around. And that will make our journey, I think, a lot faster if I can keep that in mind. Not that I don't know where we're going anyway. There's level 5, and we learned how to summon our imp. Very cool. Our imp's name is Garpep. I'm pretty sure that just gets assigned randomly. So he's going to deal some additional fire damage for us. Uh, really cool. We can move him up a little bit here so we can see him. 
And he stays out all the time, so he's going to be a permanent companion. We'll eventually get other pets, other demons that we can summon. I guess it's kind of silly to call them pets. Although, they're basically pets. We are a pet class. I have a feeling the drop rate is probably considerably higher than it was initially in Classic. And I don't know, maybe for you, some of you guys, that might get annoying, but I, I probably will be making comparisons to Classic throughout the playthrough. Um, I'll try to keep them, you know, relevant, but I am playing Classic at the same time, and part of the purpose of this playthrough is just to kind of see how different the gameplay experience is. Especially for new players. So I will probably be making a lot of comparisons. And I'll try to be fair in those comparisons. But I think that it's very interesting how different the game is. And I think it's worth talking about. Well, that little guy looks like he's AFK. We might have... Oh, there he goes. Now he's back at his keyboard. Look at how many people are in here. Luckily, we only have to tag monsters in order to get any credit, so notice how all we did was, even though this gnome was fighting it, we just had to throw up a corruption, and we'll get to loot it. So, I actually like that, just because there's so many players sometimes that having to tag your own mob can be arduous. And if you're helping friendly players, I think that everyone should be able to share the experience and loot, because that's what's going to promote people actually helping each other organically, now, if someone's about to tag a monster that I need, uh, depending on the kind of person I am, I might be more inclined to let them fight it on their own. But with this system, I'm inclined to help everybody, because I also derive a personal benefit from doing so, in that I still get a little bit of experience, a little bit of coin, and I get to loot the quest items, more importantly. Same thing if we were in a party. If we do group up with people, we are going to be able to share... Uh, the quest drops, which is totally different from Classic, how you get to a point in Classic where you don't want to group for anything that's not an elite quest, because if, they're, if you're waiting on monsters to drop items, you have to split that up. You don't get to share it amongst the party, so it actually stops you from grouping or playing together in a lot of different areas in Classic once you reach a certain level where you're self-sufficient, you know? Whereas here, yeah, we're not grouping up, but I do get the sense that we're kind of all together. And that way, when we get a bunch of respawns, we all are inclined to help each other out. And I'm assuming we're going to be getting some respawns here any minute, uh, because this place is thoroughly cleaned out. I hear... Oh, that might be our imp making that weird noise. Well, at least we got our corruption off. See how nice that is to still get rewarded for the spell you cast? Looks like we missed a bit of a party out front here. That's a little unfortunate. Where's our imp? Oh, he's backlining it. He's good. He's, he's the one throwing the fireballs that you're seeing. 
We have all of our candles. We need two more dust. Uh, he stands pretty far back there, doesn't he? I'm surprised we got credit for that. I thought that the dot would have to tick at least once, which it didn't tick. But we put it on him, and, there, and so we got credit, which is great. Um, let's see, we're looking for like one more. I feel like if we're out here for a minute, things are going to respawn. But we could check up on the ridge. And look at that. There we go. Uh, we could do a couple things. We could go right back and turn those in. I don't think that they're going to... Sp they're going to turn into anything right away that we need to immediately follow up on. Let's check out these farms. Because if I'm not mistaken, there should be some quests to pick up at one of these. Uh, it's clearly not this one. So let's head, uh, let's head across the way here to the Stonefield farm. You'll notice how much cleaner and revised the maps do look, though. After the Cataclysm, they had to redo all the maps. All the zones got some kind of overhaul uh, once the Cataclysm expansion released. So they took that as an opportunity to basically redesign the old world of Azeroth. After, you know, we had been to Outlands and Burning Crusade, we've just defeated the Lich King and Wrath of the Lich King, and that's when the Cataclysm happens. It's after the fall of the Lich King. Uh, the dragon, Black Dragon, Deathwing, wakes up and basically creates the Cataclysm. Uh, lost Necklace, we know about the Lost Necklace. She's lost her necklace, and she thinks that Billy Melkir took it. Have a good one. And Billy's at the other farm, so we'll have to run over there and talk to him. Hey Princess must die. The Brackwells have a prize-winning pig, Princess. The sow is huge, and she got that way from sneaking over here and eating my veggies. It just so happens that she's here now. Princess must die. Bring me her collar as proof of the deed. Interesting. Yeah. So, in, in Classic, Princess was not just hanging out in this field. In Classic, you had to come all the way over past the river here. Uh, to find a princess at another farm, so... Uh, but we can see that she's, she's gonna respawn here, so... Uh, that's one of those things that just got made a lot easier. While we're waiting... Oh look, and by waiting I mean we're not waiting very long. That was not difficult at all. Alright, uh, possibly the easiest quest we'll complete today. Can I help you? See you around. And then we do need to go over and talk to Billy. I am actually really pleased to see um, how many people are out here leveling. That's really cool. It means the game is alive. It means that people are excited about Shadowlands and they're probably doing what we're doing, which is thinking about leveling an alt all the way up that we can really get into Shadowlands with a fresh character. And that's kind of my hope in all of this, that I will find a character and a class that we want to take all the way uh, to level 120 so we can take that character and class into the Shadowlands with us. Oh, Billy. 
Maybe if I got a pie, I could tell you who has the necklace. And you know, I think that old Bernice lady at the other farm makes great pork belly pies. Maybe if you gave her some tender boar meat from the boars that hang around our farms, told her what it was for, she'd bake up a pie for you. So he's blackmailing us, but it's okay. And then we have a quest to pick up over here um, as well. We're going to be level 10 before you know it, guys, so any thoughts as to which spec we should go with, I would be open. I will probably end up trying all three specs. Uh, they're all obviously DPS specs, and they're all going to be slightly different. So I'll probably try them all, but I, I'm up for suggestions and thoughts on what the best spec is for our Warlock here. Maybe not the best, but the most interesting. I don't care if at max level it does more damage by a percent than some other class or spec. What I'm looking for is uh, an engaging playstyle. Something that can kind of keep us on our toes a little bit without being micromanagey. Like, I was never one to snapshot my dots back in the day when snapshotting was a thing. I think that's ridiculously tedious and I don't, I don't like that kind of min-maxing. But I do want something a little engaging. So let me know if you guys have any experience with the Warlock in retail, uh, what you think we should go with. Yeah. Oh, I'm cursed. My heart belongs to Tommy Joe Stonefield, but our families are bitter enemies, so I can't see him, even though my eyes ache to gaze upon that handsome face. Please, take this letter and give it to Tommy Joe. He's usually at the river to the west of the Stonefield farm, which is due west of here. See you around. Yeah, we get it. Run all over the place. Uh, but while we're doing that, we're going to bag another boar here. Um, I do have heirloom gear, but those of you who might wonder, I'm not wearing it through this playthrough. Uh, part of this playthrough for me is just kind of seeing what the new player experience would be like. Um, the, now, the heirloom gear, what it does is it's going to give you a lot more experience gain, though. You can see each piece, 10% increased experience, 5%, 10%, uh, awesome weapon, another 10%, another 10%. <laughs> So you actually get quite an experience bonus, but I, I mean, I'm not sure. A new player would never start with heirloom gear, so I'm kind of not really wanting to use it. I feel like we already level really fast. Good day to you. I don't think it's right feeding the boy who stole my necklace in the first place, but if that's what it takes to get back what's mine, then so be it. Maybe he's just hungry and we should feed him because he's a boy. Boys do mischievous things. I think that like stealing a necklace and demanding a meat pie is like pretty damn harmless. Though this wild boar meat is bland, slim, simmer it enough in the right spices, and it sure does make for some tasty pie. All right, here we go. We'll give this travels. give this back to Billy. Actually, we should head over. Uh, first, yeah, let's do that. Let's head over and do Young Lovers first, and then we'll head back to Billy. Uh, we're gonna avoid Princess. We don't need her. Look, she's got a prize ribbon on her. I've never really noticed that before, but I think it's actually adorable. There you go. I think our imp is probably still back there helping out, and I think that's really cool, too. Yeah, there he is. Garpep. Come back to us, Garpep. What can I do for you? Oh, uh, here's the love letter. Please, talk with Grandma. If anyone can find a way to bring me together with Mabel, she can. She's inside of our house, east of here. Have a good one. Yeah, we know where she is, buddy. We've done this before. You guys have been doing this um, Starcross Lovers thing for about six years at this point. I mean, if we're counting all the way till modern day, then obviously we're talking about a lot more than that. I'm just counting the years from... Vanilla till Cataclysm is how long they've been at this quest. I guess that's the old saying, the more things change, the more things stay the same. Need help? Really enjoying all the improved character models though. Even it's obviously just facial stuff and expressions. Body types are still 
annoyingly standard. While our families are feuding, Tommy Joe and Mabel don't have much of a future, but maybe we can get them together for just a little while. I would have loved as part of the Cataclysm to see this feud changed and maybe they had formed one enormous like collective farm with each other. That would have been like attention to storytelling detail that they maybe just don't have. Light bless you. Yeah, let's go ahead and track this one and go back to Billy. We do have to not just follow the Earl blindly, we should check our map just to make sure it's uh, pointing us on a course that makes sense. You guys let me know about the heirloom gear. I'm cool with not equipping it. I know it's not efficient since I have it and it's going to be like a 40% increase to experience gain by killing monsters and completing quests and whatnot. Uh, but you guys let me know how you feel about that. It doesn't mean it's going to change my decision, but I am just interested to know what you think. Whoa. There you go, buddy. Here we go, gold tooth. I was playing near the Fargo Deep Mine, and I think I dropped a- I mean, I saw the old lady's necklace. Don't ask me how it got there. It wasn't me. Well, anyway, I saw this big, gold-toothed kobold pick up the necklace and go run back to his den above the mine. Go find that kobold, and you'll find the necklace, I swear. So, so gold Tooth's location has moved. He used to be deep in the mine, which necessitated you to go basically fight through there twice. Apparently now he's just chilling outside of the mine. Up on the hill. <laughs> in a very safe place for new adventurers to find him. And finding him is not going to be hard with the blue circle on our mini-map. There's the old boy. He got some backup here. But we can handle it. And we'll get level 6 in the process. All right, now let's go ahead and turn the ring in. Or necklace, rather. Is it a ring or a necklace? I'm glad to see that these guys are actually aggressive, though. I mean, they're really easy to take down, so at least they're aggressive. If they were passive, that would be a little bit too easy. You need something? Here is your necklace. Here, take this. It was my husband's, and he always said it was lucky. If only he didn't forget it on his last campaign, we are going to wear Uncle Stonefield's pants. Um, See you later. I'm assuming that we get those like fitted properly. Let's just imagine that some fitting has gone on. And we'll just... Uh, they're the same as the pants that we have, so... And we're not going to get to see our pants because we are wearing an awesome robe. So they could be pink or neon green and we will never know. Um, I think at this point let's go ahead and we'll use our hearthstone, maybe. No, we didn't set our hearthstone back at uh, at Goldshire like we should have. So I'm going to have to do an embarrassing run here. Uh, it won't be that far though. But yeah, we will set our hearthstone in Goldshire. And I'm fairly certain there's a flight point there. And there should be a flight point out here at... Oh yeah, Robert. You can see where there are flight points. Because they're marked on your map with this blue flight point symbol. Even before you have discovered them, you can see where they're at. Very, very different uh, than Classic. There's a lot more flight points in a lot more places. And you'll notice that as we go through the different zones, some of which we've already played through in Classic. If you've seen those playthroughs, I think that you'll find the differences very interesting. At least I do. I hope you guys do as well.
Here's the pet battle trainer. Interested in catching some rare pets? I don't know, I haven't done a lot of uh, pet battling. But we earned an orange tabby cat. That's pretty cool. So, I, it might have been in Cataclysm that they introduced the pet battle system, which is basically like Pokemon within World of Warcraft. So if you're a big fan of the games like Pokemon, uh, you can now actually battle them. And so every pet that you have will be tracked here in your pet journal. And you'll see stats about their attacks and their just general statistics, what types they are. I haven't done really any pet battling. It was something that I kind of thought I was going to do. Let me tell you a little bit about my youth. Um, from the ages of like 14 to 16, when I should have been doing other things, I was playing Hello. Pokemon Red, Blue, or Yellow on the on the Game Boy Color. Uh, and I basically I basically love Pokemon. Now I don't really love what Pokemon has become, but that's a whole other story. Thanks for the dust. Here's your cash, and here's a token from an associate of mine. Safe travel. Anyway, the point of that was uh, I wouldn't mind getting into some pet battles. I don't really know what the rewards are or what the gameplay loop is like, but it would be something I would be interested in checking out because I never have, and it's been in the game for a long time. What can I do for you? Fargo, do you mind? I wish to ride the Stormwind Charger. What? <laughs> He's offering us like a, a, a ride somewhere? Probably to the far side of the zone. That's crazy that they would just give us a ride. This is bad news. What's next? Dragons? Yeah, there are dragons. Ha ha. We'll have to increase our patrols near that mine. Thanks for your efforts. And hold a moment. I might have another task for you. Thanks to you, we know the Fargo Deep Mine is infested with kobolds. Now we have a need to scout and investigate the more distant Jasper Lode Mine. Explore Jasper Lode and confirm any kobold presence. Reach the mine <laughs> to travel east. You can see that, you know, our, our cinematic reading of the quest is going to be, you know, very easy to accomplish here in Goldshire. Which is kind of why I'm breezing through it more than I would, you know. Uh, this guy's already, like, neck deep in a turn-in. Let's go ahead and just set our hearth. Good day to you. Have a good one. We don't need any water yet, I don't think. Hey there. Here's your candles, here's the notes. Uh, the note, he's going to make an invisibility liquor, but he needs four crystal kelps that we're going to find in a nearby lake. And cobalt candles. See you later. That doesn't chain into anything else, but it does get us a couple of items. Let's go ahead and equip... Um, well, it just has one armor on it still, but it's new. If I don't equip it, people won't be happy. Uh, and same thing here. It's just a different color, so congratulations, we now have a slightly different color of robe with the same exact statistics on it. I don't know what that gets us. What are you looking for? Well, I'm looking to sell off all of our junk, as a matter of fact. We're gonna keep a hold of our cloth for obvious Thank reasons. You. We also have this uh, awesome tracker that we can kind of like look for things. So I want to find, well, that's fine. I want to find the profession trainer who is back here. Cooking trainer. That's fine. A butcher, a cooking trainer. Uh, really interested in the core professions though. I don't know if any of them will be upstairs or not. Probably not. No, there's nothing going on back here but like some general weirdness. This is a light forge drain eye. I'm not sure exactly about the rest of what's happening, but uh, we'll just leave them in peace here in their room. All the class trainers are still here for the most part, even though you're not going to use them anymore. Uh, but we're looking for a profession trainer. Let's check outside. I'm actually surprised that there's not just like a single profession trainer here to teach all professions, kind of like what we saw. We saw that in the Worgen area, actually. So it's a little bit strange to not see it replicated here. Uh, let's go ahead and head out to the lake. When we're in Stormwind, which will be really easy to get to, we'll grab professions. What those professions should be, I, I have no idea. To be quite honest, um, maybe we just grab some gathering professions. We've we've kind of done that before, so we could grab herbalism and skinning. 
And we'll also keep all of our cloth because eventually I think we might want to do tailoring. But like we could be skinning these guys right now. Maybe if we had looked up at Northshire, there might have been a, a class trainer there or a profession trainer there. I just didn't even think to look that early. Okay, the kelp is going to come from the murlocs. I don't know how Dugan cannot think there's a murloc problem when murlocs are literally infesting like many parts of the zone. Also group looting, so when we uh, when we loot one, it's going to loot everybody nearby. Also a very good improvement, a good quality of life feature that I wouldn't mind if that made its way in the classic. I have to remember that we have quite a bit of range and we need to utilize that range. We don't have a slow... oh shit. We don't have a slow the way the, the mage does. So we just have to be a little bit careful and use our range to its max. Oh, look at that. We found a couple of things. We found a green bag. You guys, if you've seen any of the other playthroughs, if we find a bag on a character at low level, I consider that to be good luck. So, that's awesome. We're going to go back and turn this in. I'm like so close to the Jasper Lode mine though. I'm wondering if we just run up here. Let's go ahead and let our corruption tick and let our imp take care of that guy. And let's keep moving. If we head up here and we explore the Jasper Lode mine, uh, we'll just be able to hearth back. So I feel like it's worth it. That must be our introduction to pet taming. Perhaps. Alright, who are you guys? A gnome hunter. That's pretty awesome, actually. I like a lot of the modern, like, race class restrictions being lifted. I feel like letting more classes be more, or more races be more of the classes, I think that's just good for players. And it really lets you create and play whatever fantasy that you want. I feel like just opening up the restrictions across the board would be okay, because I feel like if it's your character, you might have in your mind why your character's race, why your character can be a certain class. Even if it's not something that you traditionally associate with that race, I feel like there's room just in our own minds to say, well, you know, I want, um, you know, my race to be this class. I think it makes sense. I'd love to see those restrictions get lifted even more, although they've made a lot of progress. Just recently, all class, all races can now be Death Knights, so that's a huge step in the right direction. Obviously things like Demon Hunter, we're still so limited in who can be a Demon Hunter, it's... That part to me is kind of silly. Since literally only one race on each faction can be a Demon Hunter. Alright, we have completed uh, the mine, so let's go ahead and we'll just hearth out. All we had to do was walk in here a ways. We don't have a quest to do anything else. can I do for you? See you around. 
All right, he's gonna make the potion for us to take back to the farm, the invisibility potion. Good day to you. Light be with you. And let's let him know there are kobolds at Jasper Load. Oh, he wants us to already head to Westbrook, which is, well, it's the west of here. The garrison on our western border sends word of increasing null and thief activity. They're requesting we send more Stormwind soldiers, but we just don't have any to spare. If you can help, we could use it. Go and speak to Deputy Rayner at the Westbrook garrison and see what he needs done. Garrison is down the road. Light bless you. Yeah, we can, we can do that, and we will. I'm interested, though, about his other option. Uh, we want to eventually take the charger, <laughs> but I think for now, maybe we hit up Stormwind because I think it's time to learn some professions and figure out what these breadcrumbs uh, want us to do. Let's go ahead. We'll zoom in See you later. and we'll fly. We already have the flight points to get to Stormwind, so that's a plus. We don't have to run there the first time even, which is kind of strange coming from Classic, but here we go. And you can see that uh, Stormwind has also been changed. We have a Stormwind Harbor now, which we didn't have at all in Classic. And some more green space has actually opened up. Uh, right away, I do want to know where the profession trainers are at. We're going to go... We want skinning. Okay, wait a minute. Why does it say that they're up here? This can't be right. Well, maybe it is right. Oh, you're the right. You're a flying trainer. Oh, okay. It's just marking random trainers with this. It's if they are any kind of trainer, it's gonna mark it. Okay, I see what it's doing. Uh, we have a quest over here. I don't know what this is about. We could check it out. He's like up here awkwardly. Hello. Wine shop advert. If you talk to anyone about wine, then you know we Galenists sell the best wine in Stormwind. And we're not far. Still the trade district along the city's lovely canals. Here, take this pamphlet. Bring it to my sister, Suzetta, at her shop for a complimentary bottle of our famous Dalaran Noir. Um, sure. It's worth experience, so I'm wondering why we wouldn't do it. Oh, the other thing that heirloom gear would do is, like, if you think that right now we're already doing a lot of damage and defeating stuff too easily, equipping all that heirloom gear is going to uh, make that even easier. So, that's kind of another reason why I'm avoiding it. Okay, what's exactly happening here? Perhaps we need to go upstairs. Perhaps we don't need to go upstairs. When Robert can't find a quest to turn in on the actual map. It's in here, but I feel like people are being really stupid. But maybe that's just me. She's an innkeeper, okay. Then where is this other place? Anyway, while we're over here, we're going to go to the Herbalist Trainer, because apparently we're going to have to get into this quarter to get into this building. Which is a little bit strange to me. Okay, here we go. Here's the back entrance to the Galena Winery. A place that we've never been before, so... King's honor, friend. Greetings and welcome. Have you tried one of our famous wines? We have not. Ah, so you've seen Renato. Well, here you are. A bottle of our special Dalaran Noir. You'll not find its equal in all of Azeroth. Be careful. Uh, sure. Let's... I'll drink to that. We're only a little woozy. And then back in the Mage Quarter here, we're going to find the Herbalism Trainer. So let's go ahead and grab Herbalism.
Yeah. Okay. Let's go ahead and grab that. And I think... Yeah, we, we can track herbs right in here now. So it's on by default. We don't need to cast it every time we die or log in. Uh, it's going to be tracking herbs for us all the time. We have all these quest pickups on the map, and I'm sure they're just like really interesting things to do around town. I'm, I'm tempted just to see what some of them are, but obviously some of them <laughs> prove kind of difficult to find once we are in the building we think they are in and it's not there, so... Having really bad luck at finding some of these quests. Maybe that's the only difficult part of retail, <laughs> is just finding what building the quest is in. Uh, yeah, like, I guess we have to come around outside out here. This is becoming a theme, is to wrap around the corner and look for, like, a rear entrance. Yeah, there's something in, in the tailor shop here we can check out. Hello. My son Thurman is an apprentice at the Larson Clothiers in the Mage's Quarter. He was in a hurry today and forgot his shears and needles. I know a great warlock like you must have important tasks at hand, but without his tools, Thurman can't do his apprentice work. Please, can you take my son's sewing kit to him? Safe travels. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's for experience, right, guys? We'll do anything for experience, and it lets us see more of Stormwind. I think that's good. I always think I'm going to be clever jumping over objects, but uh, it never quite works out the way I think. And that is not confined to World of Warcraft. That's basically any video game. Up. He's going to be up. Okay. Again, he's going to be up, but he's not going to be anywhere near where he looks like on the overworld map. He's going to be somewhere else. These quests are clearly just teaching us like how to navigate the city. <laughs> oh, it's really like a young boy. Oh, Blast, I thought forgetting my kit would free me from work. Now I guess I'll have to help the Larsons with their sewing. So he did it on purpose. It's hilarious. Okay, apparently this place had a different entrance. Well, now that that's done, I mean, I feel like that's just free experience, right? But we can get back on track now. We've accomplished some important things. Now we'll just shoot across. We'll grab leatherworking. We'll turn in the breadcrumb quest here. We'll also go back and turn in Elmore's quest, but I think that's going to be a breadcrumb that will take us into Dunmoreau, which we're not going to do right now, obviously. We have plenty to do here. Of course, now I'm going to see all these and I'm just going to wonder if I can find them. Harlan needs a resupply. We've been doing a lot of business lately. It seems like everyone is buying armor and sturdy clothes, almost like they expect a cold, harsh season ahead. But those are future worries. My worry today is that I'm running out of knitted clo clothing to sell. I need another load from our supplier. If you could take this request to Rema Schnendler at the Canal Tailor and Fit Shop, I'd be most grateful. Safe travels. This is just taking us, like, all over the place. Um... This one is perhaps taking us, like, around the corner. Again, same trick as last time. You know, we've been here now, I think. Yeah. You need something? Clothing request. It says here that Harlan's business is booming. That's good news, but I wonder why people have need of all that armor. I've heard nothing of open war. Is there something the nobles aren't telling us? 
See you around. There are always things the rich and powerful are not telling you basically about everything. So keep that in mind. Alright, uh, we've cleared out this area of quests now. So my OCD is a little bit assuaged. And we got, you know, some decent experience for doing the equivalent of basically nothing. Except running around and getting to meet some characters. So I think that's a huge win. I saw the bird flapping over there. And I thought that the character model was doing jumping jacks or something abnormal, so... It's a relief that it's a, just a flapping bird. It's nice to see that the smog has lifted. Oh, this is the old town, that's why. This is not the Dwarven District. I don't know how much time we've actually spent in the old town. I, it's very nice here. I like the red brick walkways. Even if they are a bit worn and moss-covered. You need something? Ah, a note from Smith Argus. I'm not surprised he needs more gear. There are so many new recruits these days. Well, thank you. Here's some money to cover your travel costs. Dungar Long Dirk. Long drink? Long drink. I gathered into this crate everything Argus asked for. Can you take it to him? If you've already spoken to Bartlett at Goldshire, then you can take a griffin back to him. Yep, we can get back. See you around. We will find our way back, kind sir. Uh, but first, we are going to head up this way. And then, likely, we will hit up this pet trainer just to see what that quest is about. Because it's probably just easing our way into doing some pet battles. I don't know if I'll do that or not. Um, if you guys are interested in it, let me know. I am interested in it. I just don't know if it would be entertaining as part of these videos to do random pet battles. It's almost how I feel about like playing Gwent in the middle of a Witcher episode. It's like, yeah, that could be a good distraction, I guess, but are we gonna are we gonna watch that? Are we gonna are we gonna do that? I mean, I'm willing. So yeah, let me know. We do have like I don't know if I get access to like all my pets or not, but uh, I have quite a bit of pets. Quite a bit of pets. I have many pets. Let's say that. And I would love to collect more. Because we have to catch them all if we do that. Obviously. Well met. You agreed to help with my delivery? Very good. Be good. Stormpike's delivery. So yeah, this is Stormpike delivery. We actually did this pretty recently on our Paladin and Classic. This is just going to take us to Loch Modan. See you soon. Uh, whenever we're ready for that, which we are not, let's go ahead and we'll untrack that one. We'll let it sit there for a while. It's you can't really out level quests in retail the way you can in Classic because everything, all the content scales with you. So as you're leveling up, the quests are leveling up to a certain point, and the monsters are going to be at your level 2. Um, and that's level scaling, so... Um, running through here is probably not going to get us where we need to be, because it looks like where we need to be is outside. This is a very beautiful little area that I've never seen before. Apparently because maybe it was part of the Pandarian expansion. Uh, I didn't play a lot of Mist, and I've heard from a lot of people that that was one of their favorite expansions. I power leveled a monk healer to max level, and by the time I got him there, we started doing some heroics and some raiding, and I was burned out. I would not suggest that kind of power leveling to anybody, and that's why I don't really do that anymore. It just negates the enjoyment of the game. Hey there. I can tell you have been honing your pet battle skills. I think it's time for you to take on a real challenge. Julia Stevens can be found at the Melchior Vineyard south of Stormwind. She is an up-and-coming wild pet tamer, and I think it's time you faced her in battle. Hmm. We will take this, because the Melchior Vineyards we are very familiar with. I wonder if this... Oh, nice, nice. Account but wide. So this tracks it... Okay, that's cool that it breaks it out into a different, um, Good 
day to you. Area. Catching some rare pets. Okay, she doesn't have anything. See you later. How and what, you? what else? Battle stones. Instantly upgrades a dragonkin battle pets to rare quality. Ooh. Maybe I hope we can earn these uh, by doing the actual pet battles, but we'll see. Uh, we had marked a long time ago, we had marked the leather worker, I think, or the skinner, and then we never we never followed up on that. So I will go ahead and grab skinning, but I think we're going to take a break here, and when we come back, uh, we'll head back out. We have some things to do now, and we're going to start by turning in the escape. Maybe we'll do a pet battle here, since it's right nearby, and then we'll take the horse Marshal Dugan's offering and head out to the bridge to see Guard Thomas. That's the plan for next time. Let me know what you guys think of the Warlock and the changes that we're seeing here, especially if you have thoughts about comparisons to Classic. I would love to have those conversations with you guys. Think about what spec you'd like to see. I'm going to try them all, but I'm thinking maybe Destruction first. Let me know. As always, guys, I really appreciate the support, so take care of yourselves out there, and we'll see you again soon. Bye now.